Um, Gary, you've, you've got two games under your belt now after that stuttering season with injury. Do you feel now that you're kind of like fully back, match fit, ready to go for everything? Um, yeah, I think like even when coming back, you, you don't have no excuses, especially how we train at, at Leinster and at Ireland. I know the other provinces are the same with how they train. That if you get a couple of weeks running the train, it shouldn't be an excuse to get back match fit. Um, so I guess I never would have had that excuse coming into the end of the season with Leinster and this. Um, but yeah, it's been great to like two losses so I can't say they've been good experiences at the end of the day but it's always a privilege getting back playing and when you are injured appreciate how lucky an opportunity is to get. You also came out at half time on, on Saturday and made an impact for you kind of like a coil spring ready to go away from the ball? Uh, uh, we, we trained and challenged all week and I covered the back three and centre stuff uh, it's like Faz would challenge the whole bench and even the guys that are out there to know your stuff so it's um Having that challenge put to us is always good because you kind of have a good feel for the game. You're looking at it from more than one perspective. So when I got the call to come out at half time, um, yeah, I was ready to go at, at 13 and um, excited to get out there and play in a big game. What were the what were the positives you took from from Saturday that, that gives you the belief now that you can go on level the series this weekend? Um, it's tough when you when you lose, you don't take many positives, but. Uh, I guess the opportunities that we potentially did create maybe didn't take. Um, I think there's another level in how we can play. I, I credit to them how strong they are um, on defence and, and the pressure they put you under. And then equally on attack, they have really good variety. So it's to, I guess, having faced it once, no doubt they're trying to level up again. Um, and there's area, there areas of their game we'll try and level up and, and equally then we'll try and do the same thing. So. The, the positives, I guess, is having an opportunity to go again, um, and knowing that I think we can be we can be better, um, and the challenges will be uh, to improve on wherever they improve on as well. And just funny for me then, Dale and and Creel, they're going again this weekend in the centre. What is it about? What is it about those players? Like, what are their the, their, their special talents? What are what are the things they're bringing to the set up? But um, well, they've great cohesion when when they play together. Uh, like uh, Damien's an unbelievably good ball player, um, passing ability off both hands, kicking ability as well with attacking kicks, um, and that's before mentioning the, his ability to carry. Uh, and then you have Jesse Creo, who on defence gets through a crazy amount of work and chases every chance, um, chases every scrap, and he's he's kind of a cornerstone of their defence. Even on Colby's try, you can see he's chasing up the inside as well. So. It wasn't just a once-off bit of a uh, moment from, from Colby. It was him chasing the chance too. Um, and then on attack, yeah, his, his pace and ability to take on the line as well is, uh, is tough to deal with. So we'll, we'll have our work out, cut out for us this week. Thanks. Uh, Rory then. Rory, that Colby moment, um, is that just kind of a reminder of what's expected, or, uh, what should be expected at the national level for a guy who's won two World Cups, done everything in the game, he's still hunting the way as if it was a World Cup final. Does that just remind you of the young lads that this is what it takes to be a top quality international and make, make all that's happen in big games? Uh, yeah, I think so. Like Taking a step back from all of it is it's a lesson for young and old, everyone, that um, he's obviously unbelievably talented, but that's, that's kind of a zero talent moment from him. Um, it doesn't require skill, it just requires work rate, which he has in abundance. Um, and then creates the opportunity for himself. So yeah, yeah, definitely. I think anyone can take a lesson from that. What's kind of this week been, been like in terms of like you don't lose often in this in this group, but uh, Andy seemed pretty pretty disappointed on Saturday night. Like, it, it, has it been kind of down? Has it been trying to like how have you kind of assessed and kind of used last week to try and motivate yourselves for this week? Yeah, it, it, it it's pro like as in there's no egos in the group and. Why, why we call it, say it's a special group and we all feel privileged to be a part of it that everyone wants to do their best give their best um, and ultimately and ultimately win but that's a byproduct of, of being as focused and as hard working and enjoying each other's company and you know all of that um, so when it doesn't work out I think a lot of guys are, are quite hard on themselves so it's about just being open and honest and transparent and um, and, and putting it all out there, so that's probably what the last two days have looked like. Just being open and honest, what we can do better, what 
maybe look good and what we can build on. Um, and and it's like it's it's a huge opportunity to as a group for us to get a chance to go again. Um, is is all any of us would ever want. So. Uh, so I kind of went on a tangent there, but I, I guess that's it. Open and honest, transparent, um, say it as it is. It's not being hard or soft or anything. It's just dealing with the reality of the game and, and trying to be better. You're generally racking your brain to remember the last time you lost two in a row. So I'm sure you're not losing that as a negative emotion but to, or a motivation, but this team do tend to bounce back. You did it in New Zealand. You've done a, you did a good record of doing it. I guess, like, me personally, and w- wouldn't necessarily look at the outcome, it's... When it's just back to the process, so win or lose, that'd be what we'd be doing. But um, I guess after a loss like that, it's maybe a little bit more heightened um, to to try and be better, work harder uh, in the in our preparation, and then and then let go, and you have that freedom to attack the game off the back of how we prepared. So without putting pressure on an outcome, it's certainly now is to just prepare as best we can. Um, I think so. What I remember Andy said um, before, I can't remember exactly which game, but he's like the biggest game in Irish rugby's history is always the next one. Um, and with how competitive the group is, how special an opportunity it'd be to represent the country, that that it couldn't be more true. And given, I suppose, that it's the last week of the season, maybe that's, that's true too. But any opportunity... Um, any of us get to play for Ireland, it's never taken for granted. And it, it motivates you to work hard, like I was saying, in the week to prepare um, and, and challenge the process of, of being as ready as we can to then ultimately let go and attack the game on, on the weekend. So, um, yeah, a lot, like it wouldn't, certainly from my perspective, I was injured a lot. So um, you'd never think back of a bit long season or get too caught up in that. It's just the week that's in it um, is to give it everything. Yeah, I mean, it, it's um, I guess rugby is like a bit of a religion here, so it's cool being in in that environment uh, where it, it clearly means a lot to a lot of people. So to test yourself or get a chance to test ourselves at that level, um, bigger picture will only benefit from. Um, but yeah, I guess. I've said it before, I think it was the prep to the, before the Lancer game, like Loftus is a pretty cool um, stadium in terms of a bit of history to it, the fact that it's brick and a bit more old school. So uh, that was cool playing there. And then and equally this week in Durban, getting that same chance to play um, at a kind of iconic stadium. So yeah, definitely lives up to the hype. Uh, yeah, but that's, that's a little bit down the line. So be focusing on the task at hand. Yeah. Last couple of questions, guys. Anyone from our South African guests? Yeah. Gary, do you feel as a full job is in a very good place at the moment with the closest morality between the North and the South? And obviously, every day in the URC and so on, the impact that South African teams sort of had in the country? Yeah, they, well, they definitely made an impact on the URC. Um, over my last couple of years playing with Lancer, with the Pro 14, and then maybe even a little bit through COVID, the South African teams, it was maybe a bit clunky, but I think last season was pretty evident. Um, but the one before and last, that the South African teams have really found their feet and challenging European rugby, um, with with no game being any sort of let up, whether it's home or away, you've got to be all in. Um, and then, yeah, I suppose our, the experience this group is playing against New Zealand, um, Australia a couple of years ago, um, the November tests, it's, I think it's great to be a part of and getting the challenge against the best and the back-to-back world champs is, is all I, I'd consider myself lucky to get that opportunity. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty special time, I think, for rugby at the moment. Okay, thanks very much, guys. Gary, thanks